Welcome Bidwell Church to our online platform, our live stream. We wanna welcome you to worship. We thank you for being with us today. We're in this series called Life in the Spirit. So the Spirit comes in the biblical story in Acts 2, what's called Pentecost, and the Spirit rushes in like a mighty wind. It fills the early Jesus followers with courage and they speak in other languages, so there's this beautiful diversity and that's the church that's what we seek to live into that story so we're in this series and in light of everything that's going on in the world maybe you are experiencing chaos or experiencing just the sense of being overwhelmed but know that there's hope and that hope comes from learning to walk and live in the spirit so we thank you for worshiping with us today we're glad you're here and we hope you enjoy worship Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship, all of you. Good to see you here. My name is Pastor Ray. I'm so glad you've joined us on Trinity Sunday. Did you know that today was Trinity Sunday on the liturgical calendar? So we worship a God who is three in one, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And our emphasis throughout, this, throughout the past couple weeks has been on the Holy Spirit. And we'll continue that emphasis today as Pastor Henry preaches a third message on the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. So very excited to hear that message and great that you can be here and join us to be filled with the Spirit and to worship our great God. Amen? Good. Good to see you. Uh, there are a lot of things going on here. I want to welcome, if you're joining us online, hello. Great to see you. And if you're here with us, if you've been with us for a long time and have never filled out a connection card, we do have these connection cards and we'd love for you to fill one out just so we can know who you are and get to know you, et cetera. But if, and if you're brand new here, we'd love that. We're not going to put your name on a mailer <laughs> or anything like that or share your information. We just want to connect with you and find ways to do that well. So those connection cards are on your way out on the table on either side of the sanctuary. Also, you may have noticed the big purple vans outside. Anyone? Yeah, those are, that's for the blood drive today, which begins at nine and goes till noon today. So if you would like to give blood, you can walk in. If you haven't scheduled an appointment, that's okay. You can walk in and give blood again, nine to noon today. Also, there's a women's Bible study that's happening as soon as June 15 from 6.30 to 7.45 p.m. on Wednesdays led by Margie Shepherd, And that's going to be real exciting. Margie is our new or newer, I should say, elder of discipleship. And she's just very excited to gather women and to study the Bible together. So take a load off and join the Bible study on Wednesday nights for that two-week road trip. 
Also, there's an all-church barbecue. We want to do more of these. We want to connect with people and find ways to leverage our wonderful patio and just to connect with people. And the barbecue is once a month after the 10 a.m. worship service. So if you want to go grab coffee and come back when we do these over the summer, we'd love that. And the first one is next week, which is Father's Day. So good time to, to grill some, some good stuff, right? And we're, so we're going to do that after 10 a.m. worship, June 19. Finally, next or two weeks from today, we'll gather, the Career 20s will gather at the table. That's 6 p.m. at the Cripes. We'll have a registration. All of this stuff you can register, by the way, using the church app, which if you haven't downloaded, it'd be great for you to download. It's easy to get Bidwell Prez on there, and you can find all this stuff and sign up and let us know you're coming so we can get food ready, etc. Uh, why don't you rise and greet one another and pass the peace and say hello and extend the warm love of Jesus to your neighbor. Now please rise, friends, people of God, for the call to worship this morning. Come, Holy Spirit, ignite our hearts with joy and confidence. For God has done wondrous things for us. Come, Holy Spirit, fill us with the power of the rushing wind that we may faithfully serve you in all that we do. For Christ has called each of us and blessed us. Come, Holy Spirit, be with us today. Help us to boldly proclaim Christ's risen. Amen. Amen. I 
Well, people of God, we bring our praises and our joy. We bring our love for God to worship. We also confess or we learn to confess our brokenness and what it is to recognize that we are in progress and that the Holy Spirit has work to do in us that we might be more complete, more unified with God and more unified with our brothers and sisters in Christ and in the world. So I invite you now into a time where we confess our sins, we lay our burdens at the foot of the cross, and in so doing, we become whole, we become complete, we become right with God. Will you pray the prayer of confession with me? Holy and gracious God, we thank you that you have given us life, which we receive by your grace, and for the new life that you provide us in Jesus Christ. We're reminded, O oh Lord, that John, the forerunner of Jesus, came to baptize with water, but that you baptize with the Holy Spirit, and that the Holy Spirit enters into our lives and sanctifies us, makes us whole and complete, invites us on the long transformational journey of being your disciple, Jesus. And we recognize the ways, Lord, in which we have fell short of that calling. Lord, for the way we have not loved you with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, nor loved our neighbor as ourselves, nor loved ourselves as your beloved children, we ask for your grace and pray for your mercy that we might be more complete, that we might make amends where we have done wrong, and that we might live lives that are more in union with you and your calling and ways. Lord, we pray this prayer in the merciful name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And I invite you now into a moment of silence where you confess your sins both personally and silently before God. In the merciful name of God the Father, Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and all God's people said. Well, here God's good news. We gather around the gospel, and Paul says in Romans 5 this, which I think summarizes the gospel so well. He says, therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, in whom we stand in grace, and God has poured his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. So receive this good news today. It's for you. It's for you that you might be made whole and that we together might be a gospel-centered people. Hallelujah and amen. And please rise.
Beautiful. Thank you. Reading from the Hebrew Bible is the incredible psalm, Psalm 51, a psalm of repentance, a psalm of cleansing, a psalm of the Spirit doing the work that the Holy Spirit can do. Listen for the Word of God. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love. According to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from all my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is always before you. Against you. You only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you're right in your verdict and justified when you judge. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Yet you desired faithfulness even in the womb. You taught me wisdom in the secret place. Cleanse me with hyssop, and I will be clean. Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins. Blot out all my iniquity. Create in me a pure heart, O God. And renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence. Do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now let us stand and sing our hymn of preparation together. Let us stand and sing.
It is a great promise that God will preserve us, will hold us in the palm of those everlasting hands. As we lean into that now, we enter into a time of prayer, remembering all the things that are part of the world in which we offer these prayers in of our city. But I want to particularly focus on this being Trinity Sunday, in which we take in the God is three in one. And the truth of that is that means God is with us. And God is with us in the Holy Spirit. That's the great promise of our faith as Christians. So join your hearts with me in prayer. God, our Father, we praise you. Through your word and your Holy Spirit, you created all things. You reveal your salvation in the world. A world that we know is troubled. A world that we know is yet touched because you have sent your son, Jesus Christ, the word, the word made flesh, and through your Holy Spirit, here in our city, here in our homes, in our places of work, in our friendships, you give us the power to share in your life and your love. And so fill us with the vision, the glory that you have, that we may always serve, that we may always praise and we always give you the glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. And as a sign that we love you and seek to serve you, we join together praying the prayer that you taught your first disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As we come out of prayer, we move into a time of understanding a little bit more or a little deeper about the mission of the church. I want to invite Anna Langston up, who's part of our mission committee and has been involved in the Jesus Center for quite a number of years, and she's going to tell us about the Jesus Center breakfast. Thank you for being here, Anna. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, happy Sunday. I have to start by saying that... Um, I'm not a communicator, and usually when I'm asked to share something in public, I um, decline with a no thank you. But today I was compelled to come and share with you about a partnership and a ministry that is very close to my heart and to this church. Our church has had a deep and long history partnering with the Jesus Center. We rally around the run for food on Thanksgiving week, providing many, many volunteers. We host Bible studies there with the clients at their facility. And for decades, we have um, served breakfast on Sunday mornings. We currently serve um, six times a year. And... Um, I want to say that very briefly, we do anything from uh, shopping ahead of time for uh, the ingredients. We go on Sunday morning early and prepare the food and cook. We have people that serve and interact with the clients there. We have a cleanup crew and we have a brief uh, worship time at the end. We even had uh, one time somebody brought a guitar and we had music besides time of prayer and sharing the word of God. And um, from a personal experience, I wanted to say that my family was involved for many years serving breakfast there. And um, I have um, a strong, um, warm memories of those times uh, serving there as a family. It was a very tangible way to serve the most vulnerable in our community. My kids still speak fondly of those days. Um, we make it, uh, we make that volunteer commitment very flexible. We have people that uh, come um, every time, 
So those six times a year, we have people that just come whenever it's convenient for them and their families. We have people that have been doing this for uh, a long time, and we have people that are just starting now, like some of the students uh, from Chico State. And we have people that come alone and others that bring their families. So today, I'm here to invite you to join our team. We need more volunteers uh, to accomplish this and to go into ministry into the Jesus Center. Um, and the church really makes it very easy for anyone to sign up. Uh, most of you are aware that there's a church app, and if you uh, did not know, it's time uh, to download it uh, on your phone. Or you can go to the church website, and um, the slide um, shows where you need to click. You go to events on the main menu at the top right corner, and then once you click there, you will see um, a section for the Jesus Center breakfast. And the next one will be on July 3rd. Uh, we always do it on the first Sunday of the month. And then once you click there, you will, um, it will bring a, a drop down where you can pick the volunteer commitment you want to take up that month. It doesn't mean that you cannot do more than one, but just pick one, and then if you want to stay for the rest, you can. Um, and um, if you have more questions, I'm happy to answer after the service. I feel like if you are um, now just now wanting to get plugged into the life of the church, this would be a great opportunity. Or if you're like me and during COVID times you um, missed serving, this is an opportunity to, to get back in. Um, so thank you and I hope to see some of you join our team. Anna, thank you so much, and thank you for saying yes to coming up here and offering that invitation. We're really grateful. Uh, good morning. Well, I'd like to join my colleagues, uh, Ray and Greg, and also Anna, in welcoming you to this hour of worship, friends. It's uh, always a joy and privilege for us to be in the presence of our God and to worship Him together as a community of faith. Many of you uh, were present about a month ago. We had a congregational meeting, and there we had shared uh, the goals for the upcoming year for the church, the strategic priorities. Among them included promoting servant leadership in the church, which is um, volunteerism, if you will, gener intergenerational inclusion, providing uh, ministries for all the generations that we want to see here, including ages 15 to 29. And also relational warmth, uh, that we would be a congregation that above all things is known for, for its warmth in addition to um, promoting the truth of the gospel. Uh, we also talked about our different initiatives. We had several program directors from our ministries share with you what we are hoping to do, and we have some really ambitious goals. And in summary, what we are communicating to you is that we are a church wanting to go from a defensive posture which we have been on the last two years for obvious reasons, to an offensive posture. And we have a lot of work to do. Uh, we have a lot of things to do. As we settle into new normal, um, we are uh, aspiring to do a, a lot of things. And you may notice that there are a lot of new ministries that are happening in our church. In order for us to meet all of those goals, um, we need your help. And as you know, financial giving, generosity is a part of what it means to be a disciple, and also to be uh, committed, committed to a church. And right now we have a uh, gap that we want to close between now and when the fiscal year starts, which is July the 1st. It is 175 k to meet our expenses, so that is not our budget, that is our expenses. Um, and so we, have, we, we do have a ways to go, and I would ask you to thoughtfully and prayerfully consider how you can enable us to meet that goal. And friends, we have been doing the best we can in the last two years of being uh, very careful and, um, and very lean in our spending. And we have been operating out of an expense plan as opposed to a budget, making sure that we are meeting all of our expenses. And the pandemic was like a, a hurricane passing through. <laughs> 
Uh, and now there's the aftermath, and we're trying to get a good handle on that. So we've been extraordinarily careful. We've contracted our expense plan as much as we can. And for us to go into the year uh, balanced, uh, we're going to need your, your help. So all I would simply ask is for your um, thoughtful and prayerful consideration. I know times are hard for all of us, and it's been a, a, a real challenge. Um, but we have a, a lot to aspire to, and we want to have an offensive posture here and lead well this upcoming year. And we have a lot of things that are very positive right now, including a, a full new members class. We have a lot of new people that are coming here, and I'm very encouraged by what I'm, I'm seeing on that front. So uh, with joy and gratitude and with prayer, we give as we always do. We give out of that posture. The modalities for giving are going to be projected behind me on, on the screen. No need, to, uh, no need to, to repeat those aloud and explain them. They'll be up on the screen for you. And so with joy um, and enthusiasm for Christ's work in our lives and in the church, we prepare offerings today. <laughs> Friends, our worship service for this morning is steeped in two scripture passages. The first that was, that was read, it will not be proclaimed, but, um, but our service is certainly anchored in it, which is Psalm 51. And now we're turning to the book of Galatians, the fifth chapter. I'll be reading, reading the 16th to 17th verses and also verse 25. So let's hear God's word for us this morning. But I say... Walk by the Spirit, and you will not carry out the desire of the flesh. For the flesh sets its desire against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. For these are in opposition to one another, so that you may not do the things that you please. If we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Holy Spirit. Why don't we just pause for a word of prayer? Good and gracious God, it's a joy for us to be together in your presence. We take so much comfort 
by this worship space, this, this haven. And God, we pray that as we are here, that we would not hear a human voice or a human opinion, but rather that your spirit would minister to us and that it would minister to us collectively and individually, Lord, that we would know what it looks like for us to take that next step of faith on this journey, or as we see today's message, voyage. And so, Lord, direct us, lead us, Holy Spirit, illumine heart, mind, and soul, that we would be ever more conformed to the image of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, friends, today we are continuing our series of messages on the Holy Spirit. We're calling this series The Spirit-Filled Life. This is week three, and this is the final of those messages. In week one, you might recall that Pastor Ray had gave, gave us an overview of the Holy Spirit in Scripture, including its introduction uh, at the very first book, uh, which is the book of Genesis, all the way on through the New Testament. It was no easy feat, but Ray did a tremendous job in helping us to understand the role of the Spirit and who the Spirit is. Last week, the message was about how the Spirit plays a vital role in our spiritual life through the church. We need the Church of Jesus Christ to have an intimate experience with the Holy Spirit, and that is because the Church is a community of the Holy Spirit. It was founded by the Spirit. It is vibrant because of the Spirit. So for us to walk with the Spirit, we need the community of faith. The Christ in me speaks to the Christ in you, and, and the same in reverse. So we need one another to be in step with the work of the Spirit in our own lives. And during that message, I named the innumerable roles the Spirit plays in our lives, including defender, sustainer, leader, equipper, empower, provider, and sanctifier. And for this last message, I, couldn't, I can't possibly cover all the roles the Spirit plays, but where I'm going to land with this series, this final message, is with sanctification the role of the Holy Spirit in having a sanctifying effect in our own lives. And the reason I wanted to land there is because I know we all care so much about our spiritual growth and in our progress in faith and leaning on the Spirit to do a, an amazing work in us, abounding an amazing work in us on this side of the kingdom. One of the ways that has been most helpful for me to think about the work of sanctification comes from the following acronym that may be familiar to you. And it is this, PBPWMGIFW uh, or GMY. You know what this is, right? Some of you know. Please be patient with me. God isn't finished with me yet. The very first time that I was introduced to that acronym, it was when I was walking into a Sunday service at a church I was interning in Manhattan, New York, the Fifth Avenue Presbyterian Church. And I saw that acronym up on the sign, and I thought, what on earth is this going to be about? Maybe somebody made a mistake. And the pastor shared this acronym, and then he went on to explain, this is an, a way to understand the role of the Holy Spirit in our lives. That yes, at, at once we are sanctified by the Spirit, he calls us and claims us, but we are a work in progress. And therefore, we can say to ourselves and others, please be patient with me. God isn't finished with me yet. It's an important reminder and it's an encouragement to us that we will not arrive to the exact place we necessarily want to be on this side of the kingdom. We're a work in progress. God is working on us, sanctifying us more into the image of Christ. But there's an important question I want to ask this morning, and it's really presented by the author and pastor named John Ortberg, who inspired several parts of this message for today. And he asks this, but whose role is it anyway, sanctification? Is the onus solely on God, or do we have a role to play? And I think this is a really critical question, and it's one that's worth pondering. Because if the onus is entirely on God and does not require any human effort, what can happen is we can become uh, paralyzed by grace, which is to say, well, the grace of God saves me. It is all on God. 
for me to be transformed, to become more like Christ. And we can be paralyzed by grace because what we end up thinking is simply, well, it, there's no human effort involved, involved at all. And we certainly don't want to say it is all human effort. But Orberg's response, and mine as well per this passage for today, is that we do have a role to play. That we cannot simply say the work of the Holy Spirit is all on God. Yes, God does the heavy lifting. God takes the initiative. God is the one who has claimed you. This is very important in our faith and especially our faith tradition. But we have a role to play. And this passage says here that we are intended to walk, uh, walk by the Spirit and not carry the desire of the flesh. If we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step by the Spirit. By nature, walking and keeping in step requires effort. <laughs> and may we remember, as Dallas Willard has once said, grace is not opposed to your effort, it is opposed to your earning. So there is a role that we can play, that we do not believe in couch potato Christianity that merely that God is going to zap us on our couches and somehow we're going to be magically transformed just as Jesus was. There is a role in partnering with what the Spirit is doing in looking at how the Spirit is working, active and alive in my life today. And walking, as you may know, in Judaism, uh, signified in the way it talks about the role of faith in a person's life, being on the right path. <laughs> being on the path of, of the Christian journey, walking toward Jesus and, and living, and, and living life in, like him or into God's likeness. What I want to do now is I want to shift the image or metaphor from walking to something else, which is sailing. <laughs> sailing. The image of sailing. I was once presented this question in a seminary class. Is is Christianity more like a rowboat or a sailboat? A rowboat or a sailboat? Now, a rowboat would assume, what? That the whole initiative is up to be. A rowboat is not going anywhere unless I am, unless I am rowing. 100% effort, it, it comes from me, right? So I need to do all the moving in a rowboat. And this is more or less how the world works. Pull yourself up by your own bootstraps, Go at it alone, figure, figure it out, get it done. The movement relies on me. And we more or less uh, believe that as a whole in society. But a sailboat, uh, it, 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 re it relies on the, the wind of the spirit, but there is some movement, there is some, some effort required on, on my side. There are some things I can do. And John Ortberg goes beyond this from simply comparing a rowboat to a sailboat to comparing a motorboat to a sailboat. And he says the following. He says, think about the differences between a motorboat and a sailboat. In a motorboat, I'm in control. I start the engine, control the speed, and go wherever I want. Sailing is different. When I'm sailing, I'm not passive. I have a role to play. I hoist the sails and steer with the rudder but I am utterly dependent on the wind. <laughs> There's no room for believing I'm in control because if the wind doesn't blow, I'm dead in the water. When the wind blows, on the other hand, amazing things can happen. <laughs> and so I want to go with sailing this morning. And I want us to think about our own, our own personal voyage and what I love about this metaphor is that the word spirit in Greek and in Hebrew also means wind. <laughs> so this is very apt. This, this, this can help, help us make that connection of the role of the spirit in our lives performing a sanctifying work. And do we have a role to play? Yes, we, we do have a role to play. But we know the vital role of the spirit that wants to blow into the wind of our sails and perform a transforming work in your life and mine. And I want to highlight this morning some things that we know we need to know for the voyage. And the first one is this. You are meant to sail. <laughs> you are meant to sail. You are created in the image of God. Yes, we are fallen. We are broken. We have sin in our lives. 
but we are meant to live into God's image, into Christ's likeness. And I believe that we are therefore intended to have a growth mindset when it comes to our faith. Karen Dwelk once gave a, a TED talk about the difference between a growth mindset and a, a fixed mindset. It was very famous. It's one of the most famous TED Talks that was ever delivered. And she had studied a school, a high school in Chicago, that instead of giving an F for a grade to students, gave another type of grade, uh, NY, which means not yet. <laughs> and she said there is actually a noticeable difference in the students and the effect that it had on them. An F fears very final. There's a finality with an F and it communicates a message, right? About what you can and what you cannot do. Failure. A not yet is, well, you haven't reached the mark yet. You haven't reached the mark yet. But there, there, and there is some work to do, and with that kind of a mindset, a growth mindset instead of a fixed mindset of failure, this makes the difference in a person's life. Friends, we believe in the not yet. <laughs> we believe in the not yet. There is a lot of work in my life personally that I would like for God just to get on with and have it, have it, have it behind us. A lot of work still to do in, in my life, and all of your pastors would tell you the same thing, and I know them. There's work to do now. Uh, there's, there's work to do. There's work to do in all of us. Uh, and it's not yet. God is saying, I'm going to do that. I'm working on this. Uh, not yet. And, and will I arrive um, on, on this side of the kingdom? the exact place I want to, not necessarily, but there's the not yet of the everlasting kingdom. This time we, ex we will experience glory, um, glory that is beyond our own comprehension as we arrive in the everlasting kingdom, this place of infinite, of infinite joy where we are completely sanctified in the image of Christ. But we can have a growth mindset that sin lives in our lives, friends, but sin does not reign in our lives because of the gospel. And so we can grow and we can change. We can have a growth mindset instead of a fixed mindset because of the role of the Spirit sanctifying us, empowering us, quickening us, shaping us. So that's first. But the second thing we need to know about the voyage, about sailing, is that we need to be patient out at sea. <laughs> we need to be patient when we are out at sea. There will be squalls, and there will, be, there will be gusts of wind. There will be surprises. There will be some things that happen to us where we even may take a step back in the progress that is made and have an understanding that this is a natural part of the journey. Sin does live in our lives. And so we struggle. And, and, we, and we can come to God and we can ask for help and encouragement. But we need to also be forewarned that we will need a lot of patience when we are on the voyage when we are out at sea. I'd like to share a little bit about this in my own personal life. And last December, I had a very humbling experience where I realized that um, I'm certainly in the, uh, in the not yet phase of, of, uh, of my faith, uh, as all of us are. And I had gone to a bowling alley uh, somewhere in Sonoma County. I don't want to name the town because I don't, in case you happen to go to that bowling alley, you know, don't want you, but anyway. Um, <laughs> but uh, I'd gone out with my two boys, and uh, my, my boys are ages eight and ten, and we got a, a bowling lane, and one of my sons had requested the, the bumper, and um, I reluctantly accommodated this request. We did it. And uh, several times while he was rolling balls, the kids were, the balls were getting stuck um, in, in, the, in the pit behind the pins, and it was slowing down our pace of play. This also affected the people who were bowling next to us because we had shared the same bowling rack where the ball comes back up and you're sharing the same rack. And so they had, uh, they had called and complained to management. No one, no one had come. Uh, and then I called, I called and, and complained, and they, they said to me, well, it may get better, but just so you know, those lanes with the, when, with, when the kids are playing, um, they're slow in these bumper lanes, that's just the way they are. And I go, well, I, okay, but I'm playing at a third of the speed. Maybe you can help. So I thought, well, hopefully it'll improve. It did not improve. In fact, it got worse. More and more balls got clogged into the, into the pit. 
Um, and so I decided to approach, approach the front desk to the registration clerk. Um, I should just let you know that um, I had forgotten to wear my WWJD bracelet that day. Um, so I, I just, I explained the, the issue and I said, you know, it's fine. Um, why don't we just cut this short and I would like at least a partial refund. That seems reasonable because we are not able to actually bowl. And then they, I heard the word about their refund policy, which is they don't have one. So I began to share my, my precise feelings about their policy and, and, and the ways they could improve upon this policy. And I may have gotten just a little bit pedantic in those moments. And there was an energy level um, in that particular moment that took on. And then I asked to speak to management. And I spoke to management and they told me the same thing. And then to remedy the problem, they gave me a discount to the arcade, which I had no intention of playing at. Um, and then that was it. 10 minutes later, I had a moment of reflection. My children were not there for all this, I'm grateful. And I thought, wow, you added a lot of energy around that. Um, and it weighed on me. You may have ruined this, this young woman's night. I walked over and I said, I, I, I just want you to know that, I, that I, I, um, I'm sorry for the way that I spoke to you and I feel that I could have handled that better on my end. She immediately says, I cannot offer you a refund. <laughs> <laughs> I said, this is not about the refund. I just wanted to let you know I'm sorry. Okay, have a good night. We all have those moments though, don't we? Where Mr. Nasty comes out or Mrs. Nasty. We have those moments where we're like, wow, where did that energy come from? Why did I say that? We have things that happen in our, in our thought life that get to us. We can have uh, struggles sometimes in our, our love and care for people that are the closest to us. And we go, wow, I love this person. This is the most important person in my life. Why on earth would I say something like that? There are innumerable ways, friends, in our own lives that we fall short. <laughs> And we need to remember to be patient out at sea. Now that was just a very minor gust in the grand scheme of difficult things we face in our life. We face skulls, we face, we face uh, gusts, gusts of, 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 of the kind of wind that we don't want um, blowing against us. And we have to be patient with ourselves. And also trust that God is still at work in our lives to allow ourselves a moment of grace and to move on and to continue to offer our patience and patience to ourselves and to others for the journey. We need to be patient out at sea. Thirdly, I also want to say something that we need to know for sailing is that we need fellow mates. We need fellow mates when we are out at sea. We need other people that we can come alongside and who can come alongside of us or we can set down those anchors or we can commiserate together, or we can be on each other's, each other's boats. Yes, we have our own individual voyage, but we also have other people on voyage. We stop, we talk about the role of the Spirit in our lives. I was reminded of the power of this, of being in the community of faith and Christian community when it comes to the role of the Spirit quickening us and empowering us. And it was from this Bible study that I've been leading this last six weeks uh, on the book of James. It was a very powerful time. There were some eight or 10 of us and uh, we had a very uh, good regular attendance of the same people. And what I realized is as we were critically engaging God's word is that we were sharing uh, stories with one another of being out at sea, the hardships of life, the ways that we've succeeded, but in many ways, the ways that we had failed. And what we were doing is ministering to one another. The Spirit of Christ lives in me and lives in you. And it's very powerful when the Jesus in me sees the Jesus in you and the Jesus in you sees the Jesus in me and we are ministering to one another. And the role of the Holy Spirit is active and, and vital when we come together where two or three are gathered. As Jesus said, there I am in the midst of them to offer each other encouragement, love, and support. There's a film that I saw a few weeks ago, I'm slightly changing gears now, um, and it is the new uh, Top Gun movie, Maverick. 
So if you haven't seen it and you have seen the first one, go do yourself a favor this afternoon, okay, and see this film. Um, and uh, I, have, I happen to be a fan. But there's one particular scene that I found especially engaging. And here in this film, you have the, you have the character Maverick, which is played by Tom Cruise, but it's a much more vulnerable Maverick than the one that we saw in the film 36 years ago. And his female companion invites him to go out in the waters on a sailboat to help move her sailboat. Well, while she's out there, she's realizing that Maverick does not know how to sail. And she says, she says to him, you're in the Navy. You don't know how to sail a boat. He says, uh, I land aircraft on ocean liners. That's not the same thing. That doesn't mean, just because you don't know how to sail doesn't mean that you're not a good Navy man. So they have this debate just for a minute. And there she is out at sea and she is instructing him how to properly sail a boat for the first time in his some 40, career, 40 years of career as a Navy man. And friends, it seems to me that we too can offer that role in each other's lives. We need to lean on one another for the sanctifying role of the Spirit to teach us in the ways of Christ. We need Christian community. We need to have these vulnerable moments of, uh, I, I'm stuck, or I don't know how to do this. Can you share your story with me? Are there things that I can learn? We need to set down anchors, and we need to set down our anchor to have moments where we, where we pause, where we commiserate, where we talk about what the Spirit is doing in our lives, things that we've learned for the journey, and share our lives with one another, have even vulnerable moments. Because we need, we need fellow mates. We need shipmates, so to speak, sailmates on this journey together. But fourthly and finally, when it comes to sailing, we need to remember this, and that is we require the right equipment. We require the equipment of the Word of God, of Scripture, of, of prayer, of having uh, habits of faith like like worship, and these are really practices. They're equipment, but they're also practices. Uh, other things we can do, the practice of generosity or hospitality. And these are known in our faith as a means of grace. In other words, these invite the Spirit into our lives for the Spirit to minister to us and to bless us and to equip us in our, in our life of faith. We need, we need the right equipment when we're going sailing, when we're on a voyage. And this summer, we're going to have a series of messages, messages that is just about this over the course of nine weeks. This equipment I'm speaking of, or practices, or habits of the faith, of prayer, and, and worship, um, being centered in God's Word, and how to do that well, um, among the other ones that I mentioned. We're going to spend time on that, and what, is, what does it look like? And why are those important in my life in engaging the Holy Spirit of God? You know, today, following... Uh, the next service, and you're more than welcome to attend, we are going to have a, a baptism of a young woman whose name is uh, Masha Elson, and she's on our staff here. Uh, she has been following Christ since she was in high school, but it, she, she wishes to be baptized. She's never been baptized before, and so we are going to, going to go behind this sanctuary at the back end of the service. We're going to take her to the, uh, to the, to the creek. She uh, would, has requested full immersion. She's very Presbycostal. Uh, uh, we do offer this, so just so you know, if you ever want to and you haven't been baptized. Uh, so there will, it will be a baptism uh, by full immersion, and we're going to go out to the creek. And Masha is doing this. Uh, she's been to, to several churches around this community, and she, uh, she really um, is, is loving it here based on her time at staff. Feels very comfortable, even at home, I would say. And for her, this is an outward commitment. Not all of her family are Christians. She wants to make an outward statement of commitment about the role of Christ in her lives. And baptism is a way which we say yes to God's overwhelming yes to us. It is a means of grace that opens up the Holy Spirit, its power in our lives. You know, there's a lot of ways we can experience a means of grace. The sacraments, certainly. Communion, baptism, but also prayer engaging God's word, practicing hospitality, which the book of Hebrews tells us is when we are entertaining angels unawares, <laughs> sharing our faith with others 
invites the Holy Spirit when we are taking chances with our faith and talking about the role of Christ in our, in our own lives. There are innumerable practices that are a means of grace. And friends, my question to you and me this morning is, uh, have we set sail? And many of you have set sail, you've been setting sail for a long time. And you understand the role of the, the, the sanctifying work in your heart and in your soul, ministering to you, conforming you more into Christ. You're aware of the, the equipment, the practices, so to speak, that is necessary for this. Maybe others of us are, are wondering, am I allowing the Spirit of God? Am I, am, I playing a, am I playing an active role in having these habits in my life that invite the Spirit to work mightily in my heart and in my soul? And so friends, where, where you are today, as you are setting voyage, or you, as you are out at sea, <laughs> are you inviting this active role of the Spirit to conform you more, more into the image of Jesus. I want to land with this. I, I love this quote. You haven't lived unless you sailed. So friends, what I want to say to you and me this morning is friends, let's go sailing together. Would you join me in prayer? God, we haven't truly lived unless we've sailed. And so God, help us to be mindful today of the role that your Holy Spirit can play in ministering to us, and most importantly for our intents and purposes of shaping us into the image of Christ. Lord, there's a lot of patience involved. We feel that we have failed at many times, but may we remember the and why, the not yet. The not yet. And God, you have work to do in our lives And so if we have defenses up, help us to put those down and help us, Lord, to have the strength to hoist those sails and to be ready for your spirit to minister. Because, Lord, this scripture calls us to walk with the spirit, to not carry out the desires of the self, but to live by the spirit, to keep in step with the spirit. And so, Lord, we set sail We say yes to do. Give us courage and give us strength to take that next step of faith on the journey as we set out to sea in your powerful name. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, So friends, as we go out into the week, may we remember that uh, you were made to sail as we are out at sea uh, this week. May we hoist those sails high up in the air, and may we steer that rudder in such a way that we are offering a true and open invitation to the Holy Spirit to minister to us, the wind to minister to heart, mind, and soul on our journey of faith. Now with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit descend upon you and abide in your hearts this day and forevermore. Amen.
Thanks for joining us again. We're glad you were with us. I just want to offer you a benediction, this live stream community. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord shine his face on you. May the Lord offer you his countenance and give you peace. A grace and peace to you on this day. Have a good Sunday.